Okay. There are two general groups of people who attend Vigil Laryngoscopy Workshop. The first group are people who hasn't used the Vigil Laryngoscope. And they attend workshop so that they could justify that Vigil Laryngoscope could improve their practice. The second group are people already have Vigil Laryngoscope. So they attend workshops so that they could maximize the use of their Vigil Laryngoscope. If you have beginners, show them the different kinds of blades. You have the classic blades, which are the curved blades, such as the Macintosh, and the straight blades, such as the Miller blade. Also now, we have the hyperangulated blades. Okay? So what's the difference between all these three? When you're using curved blades, you position the tip of the blade at the valicula. When you press at the valicula, the epiglottis moves up and you could see the vocal cords. Then you could proceed to intubation. When you're using a Miller blade or a straight blade, you go under the epiglottis and lift the epiglottis so that you will see the vocal cords and you could proceed to intubation. Do not use a straight blade on the valicula. If you could see here, the tip of the Miller blade is sharp. Okay? The tip of a curved blade has a rounded end so that it will not lacerate the valicula. Okay? So, curved blade goes to the valicula, Miller blade goes under epiglottis and lifts the epiglottis. Next is the insertion. So what's the difference between these three blades? When you are using a curved blade such as the Macintosh blade, you enter on the right side of the mouth of the patient and swipe the tongue to the left. Okay? So that the right side will be your working area. So you have a bigger uh, space to work with. If you're using a hyperangulated blade, insert the blade in the midline. The design of the hyperangulated blade mimics the curvature of the tongue. So you don't have to swipe the tongue to the side. Now, if you're using a straight blade, such as the Miller blade, you enter at the side of the mouth, but you don't swipe the tongue. You don't have a planche. If you swipe, the tongue will infold over the view. So, you bypass the tongue, insert it on the side, going in the direction of the vocal cords. So, in summary, when you're using a Macintosh blade, enter at the side, at the right side, and then swipe the tongue so that you have a bigger space to work with. When you're using a hyperangulated blade, enter at the midline. If you're using a straight blade, you bypass the tongue by inserting it on the side, going to the direction of the vocal cords. Now, as a participant to perform direct laryngoscopy using a Macintosh blade. So, once you could see the vocal cords on the screen already, and the participant is still having a hard time finding the vocal cords, ask him or her if they could see it already. If he says no, Illustrate on the screen that the rest of the group could already see the vocal cords. So that's the first advantage of video laryngoscopy. It offers a better view. Next, ask the participant to perform video laryngoscopy using a hyperangulated blade.
Once the blade is in position, ask the participant to relax his hand. Illustrate that you can maintain the view with minimal force. So this is the next advantage of video laryngoscopy. It doesn't take a lot of force to get a good view. So while the participants are taking turns practicing video laryngoscopy on the mannequin, discuss the advantages of having a better view. One, you have a high success rate. You also have a higher first pass success rate. This is important because succeeding intubation attempts increases difficulty. You have more swelling, you have more secretions, and there's a possibility of more bleeding. Then, discuss the advantages of having a decreased force applied during video laryngoscopy. This equates to a more stable patient. You have less stimulation, especially on patients you don't want to have an increase or decrease in heart rate and blood pressure. Also, since you're applying less force, the chances of injuring the patient is also less. Also, discuss the advantages of having a screen that everyone could see. First, you could perform a team approach to airway management. For example, the intubator asks you to perform a laryngeal maneuver, either a burp maneuver or a silix maneuver. Sometimes, it is more difficult to the person intubating because when we are performing the laryngeal maneuver, the vocal cords actually goes further away. But if you could see the effect of your maneuver on the screen, you know that you're helping the doctor. Another advantage of having a big screen is the ability to give better instruction for intubation. I remember the time when I was learning intubation, the consultant will perform direct laryngoscopy like this. And then, he will ask me to look at the vocal cords like this. Nowadays, they could see what you're doing when you're performing video laryngoscopy. Also, you could ask them to perform direct laryngoscopy while you're looking at the monitor if what they're doing is correct. Uh, another advantage of having a bigger screen is user comfort. You don't have to bend your back in order to perform video laryngoscopy. You could perform video laryngoscopy with the proper posture. Another advantage of video laryngoscopy is safety. Now, since we have a better view, we could intubate the the patient better, we have a high success rate, we could intubate more difficult airway, it is safer for the patient. Recently, due, the, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it is illustrated that video laryngoscopy is also safer for the doctor because it decreases the amount of time the doctor is exposed during intubation. Also, if you're using video laryngoscopy, you don't have to bend down near the patient. You're farther away from the patient, so you're safer. Lastly, with a big screen and a good view, you could intubate patient in different positions. You could intubate the patient while the patient is on the side, or you could intubate patients even if they are prone or sitting down. Having said this, illustrate to them and have them practice intubating the mannequin on different positions. So let's start with a lateral position.
Now, let's try intubation while the patient is sitting down. Okay. Tell your participant to hold the visual laryngoscope on their right hand and the ET tube on their left hand. An easy way is once you position the visual laryngoscope, you could slide the ET tube on the flange of the visual laryngoscope. A big concern in using visual laryngoscopy is when we're using hyperangulated blades. The problem with hyperangulated blades is sometimes you could see the vocal cords but you cannot intubate. So the phrase seeing is not intubating became famous. So illustrate to the participants why this is so. When you have a hyperangulated blade, the approach of the ET tube is pointing towards the anterior wall. But the trachea is going down. So this is where the difficulty occurs. You could advise the participants if they have a normal patient, use a hyperangulated blade so that they could actually practice more. So that when they have a difficult patient, they are used to it already. Then, if you have a difficult patient, you could try the Macintosh blade first. Because there are times when they try intubating with a hyperangulated blade on a difficult patient. They could not intubate. They shifted to a Macintosh and then they could intubate. So, they could try with the Macintosh blade first. If it's a difficult uh, airway, if you're successful, well and good. If not, it's very easy to shift to a hyperangulated blade. Next is the proper positioning of the blade. A lot of times, we're happy to see a view like this because, wow, the vocal cord is very big. Unfortunately, when we push down the ET tube, it's very hard to maneuver because we don't have a reference point. So what is better is to go to the vallicula so that we could see the ET tube approaching and we could troubleshoot where to position the ET tube. The next step is, once you pass the vocal cords, do not push down the ET tube together with the stylet. You could push the ET tube down while the stylet is stationary. Okay, so, since most stylets are rigid. Okay? Okay. Another technique is twisting the ET tube. So normally, if you push down the ET tube, the ET tube goes like that, right? Especially most of us are using a hockey stick or a curve uh, con uh, configuration of the stylet. What you could do is twist the ET tube while you're pushing it down. So the ET tube, rather than going up, it will go down. So, for example, so, so the ET tube will, will follow the anatomy of the trachea. Another technique that you could use in conjunction to the other techniques I've mentioned before is relaxing the hold on the visual laryngoscope. So, for example, most of the time, we want a good view, right? But if you have a view like this, the tendency is for the visual laryngoscope to point more anterior. So, you could relax your hand because you don't need the, the whole vocal cords view in order to intubate the patient. Okay? So, a partial view of the vocal cords might equate to easier intubation. 
Okay, now, for example, you encountered resistance at this point and you did the other maneuvers. Relax your hand, okay, and proceed to intubation, okay? Now, for example, it is not enough. What you could do is flex the neck, okay? So, for example, you've entered the vocal cords, you did the other maneuvers, you relax your hand, you still cannot push down the ET tube, try flexing the neck. So, if you flex the neck, the anatomy became straight, becomes straighter. So, for example, we're going to flex the neck. Okay? When you flex the neck, Okay? You lose the view. Okay? That's okay. So you, you flex the neck. So ask someone to flex the neck for you. For this time, I have no assistant. I'm using a pillow. Okay? Um, then push down the, the ET tube. So while someone is flexing the neck, you will feel a give, a loss of resistance, and you could push down the ET tube. And then, after intubating, place the neck on the neutral position, and then check with the, the visual ringoscope if the ET tube is indeed inside the glottis. Another technique is to use the suction port on the visual ringoscope. So for the CMAC, the D-blade has a suction port. And for the Macintosh 3 and 4, it's optional. So what you could do is use that and place the bougie on the suction port. Okay. You could direct the the bougie by twisting it and pushing it forward okay so once it, it has entered the glottis you could railroad the it tube using the bougie and you could see the it tube entering the vocal cords Talking about the suction channel, have you encountered a patient when, when you did visual ringoscopy, you could not see anything? And then, what you do is grab a suction catheter, suction, you could see the vocal cords, but when you grab the ET tube, The secretions, the blood, saliva are all back. And then, you grab uh, your suction catheter again, perform suction, and then, when you're doing the intubation again, everything is back. So, what you could do is, place the suction on the suction port. With this technique, You could suction using your left hand. Once it's cleared, your right hand is holding the ET tube. And then you could just proceed to intubation once you've suctioned the secretion and the, or the blood or the saliva that has been obstructing your view. Okay?